Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Hawk Watching update for September 8th, 2022. I guess the biggest hawk watching news from the past few days is the large number of broad winged hawks seen at the Detroit River Hawk Watch in Michigan. So if we look at September 6th, we see that they had 7,286 broad wings. And then the next day, September 7th, they had another 5,022. And looking back at recent years, this seems on the early side to have such large numbers. So it'll be interesting to see what that means in terms of the uh, overall broadwing migration this fall. Are they going to be early at other sites as well? Um, do these large numbers in that region mean that there will be numbers that are smaller at other regions? You know, or is it a sign of anything, or is it just that the weather patterns worked out that uh, it was convenient for the broadwings to make it farther south faster? So um, I don't really have any explanations. Maybe you can leave your theories in the comments, but uh, definitely big numbers happening at Detroit River. If we take a look at the weather map for tomorrow morning, we see that there's high pressure throughout the mid-Atlantic and New England. So that means sunny skies and tough spotting because there will probably be few clouds. And let's very briefly take a look at yesterday's results from Ashland uh, since I didn't make a video, but you'll see maybe the reason I didn't make a video is because we had zero migrants. So yesterday was just overcast, a little bit of raptor activity um, in the late morning but then it started to rain pretty steadily and uh, we ended the count early. I think the one highlight though was we did have our first um, two common ravens of the season, which is a species that used to not be seen at all in Delaware and now over the past five years or so have become more common and it's kind of a treat to see them at the Hawk Watch. So always appreciate the first raven sightings of the year. The weather here today in Delaware was beautiful. The sky started out clear and then clouds developed throughout the day. Winds were light from the northeast and temperatures were comfortable, occasionally warm when the sun was out and occasionally cool when clouds were in front of the sun, but overall just a really beautiful day. And we had a lot of great birds today. It was our highest migrant total so far this season and I got a lot of good photos, so let's go through them. And we'll start with this osprey, uh, giving a pretty good look. Again, ospreys are uh, pretty distinctive with that black and white plumage. This turkey vulture posed for me in perfect lighting and uh, just a really nice look at that. And here's a Cooper's hawk on the right, juvenile chasing after a turkey vulture. Here's a look at the Cooper's hawk and you can see the teardrop streaking on the breast and you can see that the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones giving the tail that rounded appearance. Here's the same juvenile Cooper's hawk going after a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. So you can see the juveniles have a dark head and dark underside, and they have an even trailing edge to the wing with no sign of molt, and they have these pale patterns on the inner primaries. Here we have an American kestrel, one of five that we saw today. And here we have a flock of geese that normally wouldn't be that exciting, but this was actually the first geese we've had all season. So um, definitely as you get into October and November, we see the huge migrating skeins of geese, but uh, these were the first I've seen this season. So got to start somewhere. Here's an osprey migrating high overhead and it's just that classic osprey glide shape, you know, really angular wings and just a really neat thing when you're scanning and you get your binoculars on it, no matter how high they are, you can kind of even if you can't really see the shape, you still sense that it's an osprey. Here we have a small flock of bobolinks that flew over. Very nice to see those and to hear them. And here we have a flock of cedar waxwings. And cedar waxwings and bobolinks can look very similar in flight, so sometimes we have to be careful just because they're kind of a similar size and color. Here we have another bald eagle, and to me this one looks like maybe an older immature. Here's kind of an interesting bird. So this is a juvenile turkey vulture, but take a look at the wingtip here. We see that the outer three feathers are completely like pure white. And if we take a look at an underside shot, again, we see that all the other feathers are kind of pale looking, but these are just that pure white. So I'm not sure what would cause this. Maybe um, some kind of damage to those feathers. Maybe it lost those feathers and had to regrow them but um, definitely a distinctive bird and uh, we'll be keeping an eye to see if we see it again or 
if it was just a one-time thing but um that can be helpful for helping us judge you know are these vultures really migrating or not if we see the same birds over and over then we know okay it's just like a local one but if we never see it again hey maybe it was a migrant here we have two birds on the left we have a black vulture you can see that real compact shape kind of short tail that's really uh, straight on the tip and on the right we have a broad-winged hawk and we had eight broad wings today including a group of four so that was our first kettle right kettle that we had this season um, but again hopefully that's the start about two weeks out from the peak time for broad wings hopefully we'll have a few days with more than a thousand but uh, we were happy just to see a couple today here we have an adult red-tailed hawk that's looking a little bit ragged. You can see molting some feathers in the wings, molting some feathers in the tail. Here's another osprey high overhead with that distinctive shape, really angular. Here we have a female American kestrel, and we can tell that just from the tail mostly. Can't really see the striping on the underside that well. And here is a common night hawk. Another night hawk taken from below. One more osprey migrating high overhead. And this is probably a female. You can see that really bold necklace. I believe those are the adult females that show that the most, um, although it's not completely reliable. And here's part of a group of common nighthawks again. If we take a look at the eBird checklist from today, you see we had 48 species. So decent day overall. And again, a really good day, really good lighting for our photos. And as always, I'll put a link to this. One other thing I'll point out is we had a lot of swallows around today. I estimated 1,200 tree swallows and 200 barn swallows. So um, just constantly birds in the air. So it was just a lot of fun scanning around to see what we could find. And if we take a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had a total of 14 osprey, 9 bald eagles, 2 northern harriers, 2 cooper's hawks, 2 red-shouldered hawks, 8 broad-winged hawks, two red-tailed hawks, and five American kestrels for a total of 44 migrants. So again, this was the highest day so far this season, although I'm sure coming up will easily surpass this. And taking a look at the forecast, again on the weather map we saw that there's high pressure over the region, so tomorrow is looking to be mainly sunny with the high in the low to mid 80s, winds east northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So pretty similar today, but maybe a few less clouds that will make it more difficult for spotting, but should be just a really nice day to be out at the Hawk Watch. For Saturday, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the low 80s, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, so maybe a little bit less favorable. Um, the sky should be decent with the mix of sun and clouds, but um, the winds shifting to a more southerly direction, although relatively light, so should be an okay day Saturday, but wouldn't expect a huge day. And for Sunday, considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers, high in the mid 70s, winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So, not looking like a great day on Sunday. All right, it's an exciting time of year as we see some hawk watches start to get really big numbers, and we know that the big numbers will be coming to the rest of us here in the next few weeks. So, I hope you're able to get out of the hawk watch either this weekend or sometime soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.